everyone, it's Nicolette here from Journey and Daughters, your home of premium chalk paint and furniture decor here in Remuera in Auckland. Um, I wanted to start off um, our kind of Facebook Live blog post training sessions this year with the Efex mouldings. Um, sorry, so I'm a little bit awkward trying to sit here. Um, I hope you've all had a really good long weekend. We feel like now we're fully back into the swing of things here in the shop. Um, for the long weekends being over, we start our workshops this weekend and we'll be running them throughout the year. Um, like normal, like last year, if you have any questions, I am here by myself and I can kind of see today, but not properly. Um, I don't have my glasses on. But if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I will answer them later. I will save this video as a live and then I'll also make it as a blog post, um, which is where all the other ones are too. Okay, so today I want to talk about FX mouldings. They're a really good way to add detail and interest to a simple piece. Um, so this here is a Demi Loon hall table, which I will finish up and paint and will share with you. Um, but yeah, so I've already stuck on some of these mouldings because they're a little bit tricky to get them on. Um, I had it laid down to be fair so you couldn't quite see. But what I've put on here is one of the trims. So this is T31. So this is what they come like. Um, and I actually didn't use the whole thing. So I have cut it up. They're fully latex so as you can see they're all bendable and movable. Um, and I've just trimmed it to fit onto my piece. So now I have some leftovers and I always save my leftovers because they're really good to use on other projects. Um, you don't just have to put these onto furniture, um, you can put them on anything. We put them on our terracotta pots and workshops, uh, boxes, decor, kind of on anything. They're a great way to add some interest. Right, so um, I also want to put a piece here. So I have, let's just see. Um, this is R2, so this is one of the rosettes. Um, T is for trim, by the way. So I, this, again, this is what it comes like here. This one is $14, so they're really good value. Um, and what you want to do is figure out where you're going to place it. So I want to put it this way up, right here in the middle. And to glue them on, these are really simple to do. So you just glue them on. Um, FX is made here in New Zealand out of latex and in New Zealand they recommend you using the ADOS F2 contact adhesive. Um, so we have this in stock as well. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what they recommend to use. Um, so what you want to do is figure out where you want it and then using either chalk, I want to go this tiny bit, um, or pencil, you outline your moulding so you know where to put your contact adhesive. So the pencil um, isn't dark enough to show up on my dark wood. Um, just one tip, don't use a ballpoint pen because you'll probably put some indentations into your wood which will show up. Um, and don't use Vivid or like permanent marker or a highlighter because that tends to bleed through your chalk paint. So yeah, pencil or chalk. So I've already done a really rough outline um, with my chalk and it's this tiny piece. <laughs> it's a little bit awkward to use. Anyway, so I've got my outline sitting on a stool today. Um, but what I want to do is get my glue um, and the tubes are easiest. It also comes in like a pot, but it's a lot harder to use. So go for the tube. Um, and pretty much you just want to go around your uh, outline and then put a little bit in the middle. So it wants to come out. Hmm. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> um, there we go. So we just put it around the outside. And again, a little bit through the middle here. And if you do get any drips that you notice later, um, you can just get that off 
with some like terps or something um, and then you also want to do the same on your actual molding so you want to go around I don't know if you can see but around all the edges um, so contact adhesive pretty much will stick to itself I suppose it says in the name so you go around and you just want to put a little bit on um, and then you just leave it so we want it to dry a little bit so it's tacky and I'm just going to clean off the lid because you want to keep it clean otherwise you can't get the lid back off from experience so there we go put that aside so we're just going to leave this for a second um, it can take up to 10 minutes sorry I feel a little bit hot um, it can take up to 10 minutes to dry but it really is weather dependent um, sometimes when it's really cold it seems to dry faster when I say dry it's not fully dry to the touch but it's still tacky but when you touch it it won't stick to your finger so at the moment this is fully wet so you touch it and I think you can see there that it's coming off so that means it's still wet we don't want it to be like that um, so we just let it sit there until it's ready so as I said before the effects moldings are 100% latex so they curve around which is awesome um, you can do them standing up for these I did it lying down it makes it a bit easier um, you can go over right angles so say on a table they're a really good way to add interest and texture and then a really good way to pick it up with your chalk paint so I think I'm not 100% sure but I think I'm gonna paint this in a, in a very light blue I want it to look quite French and over the top um, and then I want to pick it up and do some low light so with some colored wax um, or dark wax and then I'm going to use I think the new gold metallic creams um, to pick up all of the detail as highlights so the other option would be using your gilding wax um, and it's just a great way to show it off and create some interest and texture into your piece of furniture um, so still a little bit tacky uh, one other thing with the moldings and the glue so once it's on um, and it's been on for say like 10 minutes or so you can then paint straight over and it will be fine it'll be fully dry paint over the chalk paint will cover up any markings my chalk markings that are still on here will all just come off um, and you just paint like normal the other option you could do which I don't tend to do often because this is easier what I'm doing now but you can pre-paint it and then glue it on but if you're doing that way just be really careful of your glue outlines um, and yeah just do it really carefully and slowly whereas I've kind of done more of a general outline because it doesn't matter in the long run um, now I'll just see how we're going okay so this is looking pretty good now see it's drying really quickly I don't know it's the weather because it's actually incredibly humid in here at the moment um, but you can see now when I touch it oh no it's still a little bit sticky but it's not coming off on my finger as much um, so it's pretty much dry and the same is happening when I touch this here um, so I'm just gonna stick it on now uh, one tip when you're putting them on because it's a contact adhesive it's kind of once it's stuck on it is stuck on there so you just want to do this quite nice and slowly take your time um, you either tend to start at the top or in the middle depending what it is say if it's a nice bow or something or a leg or something you might want to start in the middle and then work it around um, I'm gonna start at the top for this one just so I get it lined up how I want it but yeah it's just something to keep in mind once you put it on you've put it on so making sure that I've got it in the middle sorry I'm probably blocking there we go so I've popped it on and then you just want to press your fingers over the whole thing so you want to go over all of your edges 
just to make sure that they're all stuck on. There we go. This one actually goes out over past um, the, I suppose, the leg of the table, um, which is fine because I'm going to paint it out and it will all be fine. Um, but in general, you just want to press it all down and make sure that it is all properly adhered. And that is literally it. So I'm going to paint this up um, tomorrow probably, this week. And I will share with you how it is when you're finished. Well, when it's finished. <laughs> um, as I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Put them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And next week, I'm going to keep doing this. So if there's other ones you want me to do, let me know and I'll put them on my list. Um, I had a request to do transfers. So next week, um, I'm actually away over the weekend. Um, but I'm going to take some transfers with me and I'll do that Tuesday afternoon. Uh, talking about transfers, I'm going to do that over two weeks. I'm going to just do a general instruction and show you what the transfers look like and put them on something small. Uh, and then I also want to do it on a piece of furniture to show you how I do that. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to save this and I'm going to put it on a blog post. Um, yeah, hope you all have a good afternoon and then it's not raining where you are. It's wet and miserable and really humid here. So that's good fun. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.